Hi everyone, this is Kayla, and happy Friday. Uh, this post should be going up on a Friday anyway, so I hope you all are having a fantastic start to your weekend. Uh, today I'm sharing a layout that I made for the uh, Click, Click, excuse me, Click Kits uh, blog for their design team. And uh, today was a mixed media focus. And so I started, I showed you there, one of the papers that come in the June Horizon uh, kits is by Illustrated Faith from the All People, All Nations um, collection. And the paper is called Hand in Hand. And I liked how it had just a bunch of kind of smears of different colors of paints and lots and lots of texture in it. So I kind of wanted to recreate that. I didn't really know what I was going to do with it <laughs> when I was done, um, but I just knew I wanted to make something like that paper and then go from there. So again, I, I that paper was my inspiration. Um, so what I ended up doing, and this is a really, really easy thing to do, is I just took a bunch of acrylic paints and just smeared some across in random places in all different colors and then took my palette knife which you can see right now I'm doing with the orange color and just started randomly smearing and uh, about at this point with the orange stuff was starting to kind of blend a little more than I liked uh, I did want it to blend a little bit but I didn't want it to start getting really muddy or gross looking so I let that dry for a while and then I'm coming back in here again with some of the lighter colors and um, I showed the colors at the beginning, but it went really fast, so I'm sure you didn't see all of them. But I'm using a set uh, that I got from PT Cheap that's actually an Illustrated Faith um, acrylic paint set. And I believe it was called Shanna's Favorites. Anyways, so I have rose, um, orange, cadmium. Uh, cadmium yellow, turquoise blue, primary cyan, cayenne, however you want to pronounce it, and then titanium white. And then I also brought in three that I've just started layering here um, from Studio Calico, and those colors were Coral Bay, which I'm putting on right now, Mint Hint, and then uh, once this layer dries, I'm also going to bring in some called Carrot. And I think I'm going to have to get some more of that paint because it's a beautiful, beautiful paint. It's like a shimmery gold paint, and I love it. So, um, so yeah, I'm just smearing, um, kind of doing it in layers so that, again, I don't get that muddy look. Um, and so here's my last layer. I'm bringing in some white acrylic paint, the titanium white from Illustrated Faith, and then I'll bring in the carrot, um, and it's like K-A-R-A-T, like 24 karat gold. Um, here are my last layers. And like I said, at this point I still wasn't really positive on what I was going to do with it, but I just kind of wanted to play around. And this was really fun, and it's really easy to do. And I know it looks kind of messy now, but I knew I wasn't going to use it as a full page. I was going to use bits and pieces and stuff here and there. So I didn't worry too much about, um, like, exactly how it looked, I guess. Um, I was just playing. And I, I still kind of like it like it is now, and I could use it as a background. So here I'm just showing you that I've let it dry overnight. And now I'm using a stamp set to add some more layers to it. And this was actually a stamp set that was in the Click Kit shop a while ago. I do believe it's sold out now. But it was from Kessie Art, and it's called Happy 2017. And it's got these great, um, I don't really know how I would classify it, but it's a great stamp set that just has a bunch of textures, which you can kind of see there. Uh, I'm pulling quite a few off, so you'll get to see a good selection of them. But yeah, it's just uh, random dots, random ticks, uh, lines. Um, they got a, a grid style, kind of a, a smear that I guess I could have used. Um, 
just all sorts and I, I really like it because I think it's really versatile especially for something like this that's using a lot of mixed media so again I'm just taking random um, random stamps from that collect or that set and just trying to add just a little something extra to the background besides just the acrylic paint and I'm trying to space them fairly randomly um, but not really worrying too much a lot with the acrylic paint smearing and the stamps it was really nice because I just kind of let myself go for the most part I just made sure there weren't like blank spaces but otherwise I didn't have any rules or limitations that I gave myself so anyways I'm just using that stamp set and some black archival ink so this is the next day everything's uh, completely dry and here is where I decided I'm going to make some pinwheels um, like that little kids play with or that you know blow in the wind etc um, I decided to kinda of go with a summary layout so that pinwheel I just showed you I tested on some just spare cardstock to see what size I wanted and that pink one I did at four inches but um, I knew that I was going to want multiple so I decided to do some smaller sizes so I'm going to do um, so to do the pinwheels you start with a square and so I'm gonna do a three and a half inch square and two and a half inch square well actually I'll have five total I'm doing two three and a half inch squares and three two and a half inch squares which I'm gonna show the whole process here so hopefully it'll make sense but what I decided to do is since you fold over part of the paper for a pinwheel I didn't want the mixed media on one side and then white or a solid on the other side so I'm gonna cut out um, four three and a half uh, inch squares and then six two and a half inch squares and then you'll see shortly where I'm going to back each of those against each other um, to make it so that the mixed media is on both sides of the pinwheels so I'm almost done here with the cutting so I can show you what I mean and so I'm just kind of displaying them all out I again with the cutting just like with the smearing of the paint and the stamping I didn't worry too much about um, what it looked like I just started cutting them and here I think I had to go find my go find my glue yep okay so like I said I'm just gonna adhere two of these together so I put plenty of glue around the edges and in the center because I knew I was gonna be folding these over and that's all I'm doing to start with I'm making sure that it's glued really well because I figured with it being really stiff and bending it I didn't want it to start coming apart as I was bending it and you do see here that there's a little bit of extra um, they weren't like perfectly square so I will just trim those up um, I don't show that on camera though and so here's the two big squares and then I'm going to do the same with the three smaller ones off screen and then here's where I actually make the pinwheel so I took from both corners I took my scissors and just kinda made a gentle score mark and then you cut from each corner towards the center but not all the way to the center so there's still some space connecting it in the middle I didn't measure anything I just kind of eyeballed it but it goes pretty close to the center and then because I didn't want it to be super creased I just used a pencil to roll the um, pieces of the pinwheel in and this was a little difficult I did put put glue down it didn't stick super well um, but because I had two pieces of thick um, I'm using basil cardstock two pieces of thick basil cardstock plus acrylic paint on all sides um, it kind of wanted to keep popping up and so um, I took my poking tool 
and decided I was going to use a brad to keep all the pieces down since the glue wasn't working super well. Plus it just adds something kind of nice in the middle and I don't use my brads very often so I thought this was a good excuse to use it. And I'm struggling a little bit because like I said it's, it's pretty thick paper. Um, of course the other ones that I didn't film go much smoother than the one I'm doing right now on camera. Um, but yeah, I just take a plain silver metallic brad. It's a little bit bigger than like a normal brad. And then there's the two bigger ones. And then I do the three... Sorry, my cats are in the background making a noise and distracting me. I do the other three little ones off camera, so you gotta see all five of them there that I'm gonna have on the paper. And now I wanted to add some, some color to the background. And so I have Heidi Ho, or Jenny B. Blue. This is a Shimmers product here. And at first I was thought I was like, oh, maybe I'll just kind of sprinkle some stuff. And I thought, no, that's not going to work. So I just sprayed some on. It's a light enough color that um, between spraying and then taking a napkin right away to dab up the ink before it totally dries, it kept it light enough that it, I didn't think it dis distracted from all the color in the pinwheels because I want those to definitely be the focus of the layout. And then this is another Shimmers product, uh, Heidi Ho Blue, that I use to do some splatters just to kind of give like a two-tone effect in the background. And then at the bottom, um, I kind of use the blues as like a sky, and then the bottom I'm going to just make a little um, grass patch, I guess you could say. So I have some coarse uh, texture paste there, and I just use the coarse just to add a little bit extra texture. And then I took some Dilutions uh, Cut Grass ink spray here to mix in with it. And I literally am just smearing it. No technique at all other than taking a palette knife and smearing it. And then to add a little bit more, I sprayed some more of the Cut Grass on there as well as some Shimmers Hermit the Frog um, spray. And then just kept smearing so that it gave it a little bit more, what's the word, like, dimension because there's multiple colors um, going on, not just one smooth color. And so that's kind of the general idea of how it's going to look. And I went and got my pictures and I decided because I kind of felt like we were going with just a really, I don't know, summery vibe in this um, layout, I wanted to find some photos that I hadn't scrapped from summer. And these two are of some cantaloupe and watermelon that um, my husband and I grew actually. We did our first garden ever <laughs> a few years back. I think it was 2014. Um, we were living with my parents for the summer to save up for our first house and they have five acres so they have lots of land and we decided to do a garden and we planted oh, a ton of stuff probably way more than we should have for our first garden and um, we did do some watermelon and cantaloupe. And the watermelon was good. It, it was okay. Um, nothing like amazing. But man, the cantaloupe, I, I can't even remember what breed of cantaloupe we got, but it was just, it was absolutely delicious. My whole family loved it. And it, it just, it tasted like candy. I've never had better cantaloupe ever prior to that or since. Um, but we are actually doing a garden again this year now that we've got all the projects in our house done. So I'm hoping um, for some, uh, some more amazing cantaloupe. But anyways, so I thought I would um, just make a layout about how uh, awesome <laughs> that fruit was that we grew our very first time. And so my title, I'm going to use the acrylic piece that we got in the kit and then these really, really pretty um, kind of iridescent glitter uh, thickers, chipboard thickers that we got in the kit as well. And my title is going to be Sweet Summer Memories because I figured the, the fruit was super, super sweet and just absolutely delicious. So I'm using some wax paper here to put the sweet summer words on and kind of get an idea of how I want to um, kind of make the layout. I know I want the pinwheels up top, so I'm going to go ahead and start putting those down. And since I already had the brads in them, I went ahead and just poked a hole through and put the brads through, and that's how they're secured. I didn't use any glue for the actual pinwheel part. 
And then for the stems, uh, the pinwheel, um, I just cut some thin strips of some regular black cardstock, so nothing fancy there. And of course, before I pinned the first one in, I didn't make all the holes for all the others, so I had to bring them all back on and um, replace them. But now I've got the holes pinned, so I can go ahead and get them all in. And um, I really like how this turned out because there's quite a bit of dimension from the pinwheels, and I think they look really pretty because they're just so colorful from all the paint. So I was really pleased. I, With that background paper that I had done with all the acrylic paints, there's a lot of things you could have done with that. You could have used it as a background even though it was pretty busy and looked kind of like a hot mess for a while. Um, or you could you know, punch out lots of different shapes, circles, squares, triangles, whatever. Um, just take a stripe and do a border or, you know, all sorts of things. So it's really, um, really diverse, the things that you can do with it. But I really, really was happy that I decided to go with the pinwheels. I just, I think they turned out really cute. So anyways, I've got all the pinwheels in. I'm going to go ahead and, um, glue down all of the I keep wanting to call them stems. I don't know what you really call them. The handle of the pinwheels, I guess. And then just trim off the uh, excess at the bottom. And I speed up through some of that. And then I start to go ahead and put my photos and my title down. I didn't mat the photos because I just didn't feel like it needed it. I mean, with the... Um, yeah, with all the other stuff going on, I thought just the simple white border that I had from when I printed them was good enough. And so I went ahead and just adhered down the acrylic piece there, and rather than using liquid glue or my APG, I just used some um, glue dots, and I used the micro size. They're really teeny tiny, and they're great for um, sequins, which is what I usually use those for. But I did think it was nice to use on this acrylic piece, because since the middle of the letters are cut out, um, it's pretty thin. So the micro was great. I just added a few here and there and some of the thicker spots and it stuck just fine. And then I've got my photos down and I'm putting down the chipboard letters. I didn't add any extra glue, but as most of you probably know, when you end up putting um, chipboard thickers down, they don't tend to stick very well. And the fact that they're on top of some mixed media especially over the texture paste at the bottom, um, means that they will probably not stick in the long run. So I haven't yet, but I will probably be going back before they go in my albums and putting extra glue on those. And then on a few of the last things I'm going to do, um, these, you got four sheets, so half a pack of the Amy Tangerine um, clear stickers, and I think Ooh, I can't remember if these are from her most recent. I think these are from her most recent collection, Sun Sunshine and Good Times, I'm pretty sure. But yes, yeah, so you get half a pack. And so I don't often use clear stickers as they are, but I felt like because the background itself wasn't super busy and there wasn't a ton of color that I could actually get away with just using it straight on the page. So that's kind of exciting because I've never really done that before. But since I'm going for a summer look, um, one of the pages I got had all these bumblebees on it, and I just thought, how perfect is that? Pinwheels and bumble bumblebees um, with my fruit pictures, and so I really like that. I thought it was cute. And I'm just adding a few of the watermelons, too, because why not? I've got fruit and watermelons on there, and I will end up adding a few um, flowers here. And that's pretty much it. Off camera, I do add a, just a line of journaling across the very, very bottom of the page underneath the memories word, and I do go through and stitch, hand stitch just a few little trails behind each of the bumblebees, which you'll see in the close-ups. But for the most part, uh, that's pretty much it. I just add a few hearts. I put a white one up there, but I just you couldn't see it, so I ended up switching it out for a pink one. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed. Pictures are coming up, and have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. Bye.